So you've got your screen, your Arduino, breadboard, and a collection of parts. And you want to make the Star Trek sick bay display. Let's crack on. So a list of the parts. You'll need an Arduino of some sort. I've used a Nano, and especially if you're using a breadboard, I'd recommend that. But technically, if you want to go off piece a little bit, you could use a Uno or a Mega. You'll need the Max 3100 heart rate sensor slash oxygen sensor. You'll need the Dallas Semiconductor DS18B20 temperature sensor. You'll need two of those minimum. An ILI9341 TFT screen. Uh, I think they come in two sizes, 2.4 or 2.8, it's both fine. They should be 320 by 240 pixels and must be SPI driven. You'll need a DF player mini, that's the MP3 player. A small SD card, you're only storing one tiny file and it's on the smallest, oldest, whatever you have, knocking about to do, mini SD card to go into the DF, into the MP3 player, the DF player mini. You'll need a 3 watt, well, it doesn't have to be a 3-watt speaker, but a speaker that is capable of delivering 3 watts, 4 or 8 ohms, a small push switch, tactile push switch, and 4 4K7 resistors, and obviously some assorted wires and an actual breadboard. There are some affiliate links on my website and in the description below if you feel like supporting me that way cost you no more different than what it would be ordered normally. Maybe you could buy the affiliate links, I get a small kickback, but the price is the same to you. Great way of supporting the site. So if you pop onto my website, there's a link down below, you'll see everything you need to support you with this project. You've got a parts list, you've got the circuit diagram you can print out yourself, which you might want to as you're going through this video, so you've got a hard copy in front of you as well, so we'll always be bringing that up on screen. You can see it's separated into different areas, and you'll have a list of the libraries required, pictures, and quite importantly, all this demo code that I'm putting on to test each segment as we build it. You'll hear me refer in the video to the test code for a particular segment of the project, and you'll find it on the website for you to copy out and use yourself. So here we have the circuit diagram pulled directly from that website with the link below. You can see it's in distinct areas. You've got the screen, the oxygen sensor, the two temperature sensor, and the audio MP3 player out. And we'll go through each of these sections as we go through the video. There are four main libraries you're going to need to make this actual project work. Let's go to sketch and include library and oops, manage libraries. So the four libraries you're going to need are one for the screen, a graphics library for doing flashier stuff with the screen, one for the heartbeat oxygen sensor and a library for the temperature sensors. So let's start off and get the get the libraries for the screen. So Adafruit ILI 9341, white that in and that's what you want. You can see I've got it installed. I've got version 1.3.1 installed. There may well be newer versions, yeah quite new versions. If you are having problems with the newer version, I do usually suggest getting the latest version that you can, and I would do that now as well. But if for some reason you do have problems, just revert to the one that I'm using. But yep, yeah, latest version should work. And you click install where I've got update there. So that's the first li library. And then we also want the Adafruit graphics library. So I think we can type GFX on turn of there. And then you go Adafruit, Adafruit graphics library, 1.4.2 install. So install that one. And the next one is you want the Dallas Semiconductor Temperature Library, Dallas uh, 18B20. And it says Dallas Temperature by Miles Burton. That's the one you want. Click on that and install that. Last one is for the heartbeat sensor. So if we type in max 3100, oops, get rid of the nine. Okay, so it says I've got two installed which I have, 
but one of them doesn't work. The one you want is the second one, Max 3100 LRB Lip by Ox or Inter C Cans or something like that anyway. So install that one and away we go. So here we go, first step, we've got the Arduino on our board. Connect to the Arduino's five volts to the positive rail and the ground to this negative rail. And then we make sure that we've all over this board, I've got access to those rails by putting jumpers there. So it continues that way. And we're gonna jump down there. So we've got it all along there. And again, down to there. So we've got the positive rail all down there. The ground on this side are taken off down onto that ground rail, which then brings, on there, <laughs> brings along there. And then I've got one jumping down, going along there. So with that, I've got every rail all common so I can put components wherever I want to on this board and always got easy access to any of the ground or power rails. So let's get on. The first thing is we'll get this screen put onto the board and test that. Okay, the screen's in situ, all wired up. I'm not gonna go through this wiring again here. I've done this before in another video. I'll put a link up in the corner now. I will show you the graphics test that I'm uploaded and where to get it from. So if you look at the computer screen now, what we have to do is to get the example I've used from Adafruit, he's got a file, examples, Adafruit ILI 9341 and graphics test, click on that. And by the magic of how fast these computer is, there we go, you'll get the graphics test. Just upload that to your board and you'll have the same test that I'm about to show you now. So let's power it up and see that demo in action. And it's just, as I said, standard Adafruit demo. Goes through some text and line routines and, and various things. Some graphics. And what have you. I'll just power it off again. So, I'll put a link up in the description in a, in a, in a short while. But one of the problems you can have with these screens, certainly these cheap ones that um, you can get from suppliers in China and some other places. If you get the official Adafruit one, I think you'll be fine, maybe. But if you get some of these cheap screens, then you find that sometimes they don't work, even with the wiring being correct. I certainly had one that did work, then it stopped working. Um, it's a bit strange. In fact, it was this one, this very screen. So, couldn't get it to work with the Arduino. Was it getting successful to work with an ESP32? With the Arduino, not so much. Until I actually made a connection on the back here. Now, I'll bring this up to the camera. I want to get to focus. Let's just, there we go. There's a small connection called J1. Now you can see there's a blob of solder on this now. Is that still got focus? I think so, just check. It's called J1, and generally you see two tiny pads that are unconnected. And if you put a blob of solder there, it connects them. Now, from my research on the internet, it was kind of you did that if you wanted this to work with an ESP32, for example. Not with the Arduino. In fact, some people were saying it would break the screen. However, I was having problems, and I just took a shot, really, and soldered this pad up. Because I think it's supposed to bypass this power regulator here. Well, this one or this one. Not sure which. It may be that this is a slightly different board to the ones that have been going about where you connect it up. If you wanted to work with an ESP32. <coughs> if you wanted to work with an ESP32. But me connecting it up made this work perfectly with my Arduino. Arduino Nano in this case. So it may be this is switching a different regulator, I'm not sure. I've not tried to reverse engineer it. I haven't got the time for that or the inclination, but I blobbed it and it worked perfectly. And I've used this screen for many hours. I've left it on overnight running and it's been fine without any problems whatsoever. And I've got to try and put it back in the right place now, which I think is there. 
but yeah, it's been it's been well sort tested. It's run for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and it just works. So if you have problems with one of yours and it looks pretty much identical to this one, then try connecting up that blob of solder, and it should work. Okay, so the next thing to move on to is the actual heart sensor, which we're going to mount here. So here we are, all connected up. Comparing it to the circuit diagram, we've printed that out and got in front of you. We've obviously got the VCC to positive and the ground going to the ground rail. The wire here is the INT connection going to the Arduino pin 2. And then the yellow and blue are the normal R squared C connections. Blue being the SDA and the yellow being the clock SCL. Blue going to A4 and the yellow going to A5, which is the R squared C connections on the Arduino. Now it's important that you have these three pull-up resistors here. One's just being slightly hidden there. You can see there's one for the clock, one for the data, so SDL and SD have their own, and there's one for the induct pin. All connected up to the 5 volt rail. And of course, we've got those removed onboard resistors there. So we have to get rid of these three small surface, <laughs> of these three small surface mount resistors. Looks tricky, it's not. Let's get our soldering iron, and I'll show you how they come off. So with a little bit of heat and a bit of gentle pressure, that's the first one. And and then the second one, that's gone. Just get rid of that. Uh, come on, get off. Tap that off. And now the last one. A little bit of heat. And away it goes. And it is that simple. Job done, 30 seconds. So let's plug it into the demo software. And again, you download this from my website just so we can check that things are working before we get into the complexities of the full cord. And there we go, so if it had failed to start up, it would have said fail there, you get nothing else on the screen. Reasons it might fail, you've not done this resistor thing, you've wired something wrong, that's about it really, it's a relatively simple device from that point of view. So let's put a finger on it and see if we can get some sort of results out of it. On heartbeat, I don't think I've died yet. Okay, so I'm doing about 60s, maybe 70 or so. And 97% blood oxygen level. And that's fine. These devices are, can be quite tricky to get to work with these screens, but this demo code has been designed carefully so it does work. So load that up and test yours. So that's it for now. In the next and final episode for this project, we'll complete building the circuit and present the full source code. If you've liked this episode, then give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, then hit the subscribe button and ding the bell to receive all the notifications for new videos. If you want to throw a few coin towards maintaining extronical towers, then there are some affiliate links in the description below for all the parts for this project, or there's even a Patreon linky type thing somewhere there as well. Or you could share the video so it gets a wider audience, I'd be very much appreciated. If you got this far, then thanks very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, see you later.